I am ranked number one. One! That means I'm the best. It has to be said, this is a great opportunity for Kevin Bizier or Bizier, however you pronounce it. Great opportunity for the guy because he's just been written off. You know, I think the only people who haven't written him off can only have been family members and some real dedicated Canadian boxing fans. He literally has nothing to lose. He takes on Kell Brook at the Sheffield Arena on Saturday. This is Brook's third defence of the IBF title and it hasn't been a very dignified reign Jojo Dan Frankie Gavin and now Kevin gets his shot Brooks says he wants Bizier to stand in front of him Brooks says he feels like he's been training for an eternity and he can't wait to get in there and fight well if just standing in front of Brook means it's going to be a one-sided beatdown well what's the point What's the point of Bizier stepping in there? I mean, I'm sick of fighters coming out and saying that. I mean, like, I understand it. You know, you know, you're just standing in front of me. Just standing in front of me. It's just, just, just pointless, really. You know, boxing comprises of so many body parts and moves. So just, just tell someone just to stand there in front. It's absolutely preposterous. I mean, he's not exactly going in there with a fearsome reputation, Bizier. So if he chooses to use some legs to extend a couple more rounds out of the fight, can't be that bad a thing, surely. And um, with um, Amir Khan obviously taking on Canelo, Brook has just become like, who, who's Kel Brook? I mean, what does Eddie Hearn do after this to restore some shine and luster into what looks like a deflated career? His career looks deflated. Struggling against Bizier is just like, the worst PA for Kilbrook right now. Bizier is an aggressive fighter by nature anyway, so I don't see how Kill could have been studying any tape and then be requesting for this guy to be any more flat-footed and accommodating in terms of just standing there and slugging. The truth is the IBF hasn't helped Brook's cause in terms of them selecting mandatories, but at the same time, apart from Amir Khan, who did Eddie Hearn and Kelbrook really extend themselves towards in terms of a really quality competitive fight? And the answer has to come back nobody. It's going to be a forgettable third defense unless something out of the blue happens in there to peak everybody's radar. You know, Kelbrook's not hot right now, career's not hot. This fight's not hot. Now, stable mate, Anthony Joshua, totally different thing. He's very exciting. His career is exciting, you know, and I want to talk about that fight a little more in depth. And I shall do. There's no point offering a prediction, breakdown on this fight. I mean, if Brooke doesn't win it, he's exposed. He's exposed. I mean, even worse than... Um, Saddam Ali, the young man Saddam Ali, you know, at least Saddam fought a live body in Jesse Vargas. And this is the type of opponent Brook should be fighting, is Jesse Vargas right now. If he's as good as what he's saying, he should be taking on the likes of Jesse. How comes we're not hearing no offers from Eddie Hearn? Yeah, we want the Vargas fight. We get the chance to grab two belts beat a good international opponent. No, nothing at all. Nothing at all from Eddie. Not, nothing from Kell Brook. It's just been very mediocre and very tame stuff, you know, showing your teeth on the IFL London. Nobody really gives a fuck about that, you being witty on there. You know, I can't compare Kell Brook's reign to Lloyd Hunnigan's. I can't really, you know, because Lloyd was lighting shit up. He was calling people out. He was always calling people out. Kelbrook don't do that. Lloyd was calling out Curry. Calling out Curry constantly. Yeah? He called out the, the Marlon Starling fight. And took a beating. And took an absolute beating. I've always been a bit of a skeptic. With Kelbrook. And he does nothing to make me change that opinion. And that stance.